Neil the Picard. <laughs> Hello, I'm Neil the Picard, and welcome to beautiful Limousin, France. And it really is beautiful today. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I'm in front of the barn doors, and that means that today is a review day. And today is a review of my Grafter's monkey boots. Now then, before I get into it all, I'm going to say that this is not a paid promotion. This is not an advert. This is an actual review, which means complete honesty. And it also means that I bought the product with my own money. Um, so that I can be completely and utterly honest and give you the best review I can possibly do. And usually I, I frame things in my reviews as kind of good things first, then negative things, and then my final thoughts. But today I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I ended up with this product to begin with. Um, so years ago when I was a young teenager, I used to um, buy Converse All Stars. And I started buying them because they were the cool retro punk rock thing in a time when nobody wore Converse All-Stars. In fact, I lived in uh, rural England and I had to drive to the big city of Manchester like an hour and a half away to get my Converse All-Stars. Uh, and people used to like take the mick out of me and say they look like clown shoes and stuff like that. It's hard to think of nowadays when kind of Converse All-Stars are thought of as a cool thing. Uh, but back in the day, not so much. And um, I used to do all the things in them that, I, that young teenagers do. I used to ride a bike in them. I used to use them as just everyday shoes. And when I got a little bit older and I got some money on my own, I used to buy two pairs a year. I bought a red pair and a blue pair. And they, they'd last me a couple of years. Um, and I used to beat the hell out of them. I used to walk everywhere. I used to cycle in them. I used to do everything in, in my Converse All Stars. And then as the years went on, uh, the quality of the Converse All Stars got lower and lower and lower and lower and the price got higher and higher and higher and higher until I actually received a pair of Converse All Stars I used to order them online when I lived in Spain because they didn't sell a size 12 that's a 13 US in uh, in Spain you could, just couldn't get them they, the sizes in Spain stopped at 11 so I used to order my shoes from Ireland and I noticed that they changed the way that they bonded all the sole together um, and I was slightly concerned when I received them and then my Converse which had cost me a lot of money died in six months and I was really upset because I, I was really attached to my Converse All Stars now I also bought a pair of kind of more expensive ones at the time they were um, Gorillas you know the uh, uh -huh. yeah those Gorillas um, <laughs> that was terrible um, but I also bought uh, some Gorilla Special Editions ones which were higher quality and they lasted me years and years and years um, I actually threw them away in my first year in France and I'd owned them forever and I think they were about 100 quid or 120 quid originally I got them online in a sale and they were about 85 but that's still you know a reasonable amount of money but they did last me forever and I can't say a bad thing about them and I really loved the way they looked. But when my regular everyday pair of Converse All Stars started to die, I was very upset and I was, I was so upset that I, I vowed to not buy another pair of Converse All Stars. I was really, really annoyed. So I started looking for a better alternative. Um, Converse All Stars had changed where they were manufactured, they changed quality, the price had tripled and I wanted to find something that was reasonably priced, that was kind of cool, that was more, a bit more grown up and a bit more, a bit more trendy, uh, a bit more, I don't know, a bit different because everybody started wearing Converse All Stars. So I wanted something really different to everyone else. I wanted something that was a bit more grown up. I wanted something that that didn't rip or tear or anything like that and I'm a big lover of punk rock, I'm a big lover of reggae, I'm a big lover of retro clothing, uh, I'm a big lover of ska and I'm a big lover of like garage music, not the 90s, 80s garage music but the old fashioned like 1960s garage music. Um, and so you know it's what I was brought up on that and soul music and, and, and just awesomeness. So. I started looking at um, what everybody used to wear before New Balances were a thing and before Converse were a thing and what I stumbled upon was monkey boots. Monkey boots um, seem to have permeated kind of every British subculture at some point or another. They've been a mod thing, 
they've been a northern soul thing they've been a skinhead thing they've been a punk thing but even my dad had one and my uh, dad had one that my dad had a pair when he was young and uh, my dad's into like pink floyd and and dire straits and stuff so they seem to have permeated everybody in, in northern England at least at some point in, in, in the uh, 70s um, so I set out looking for a pair of monkey boots and I went online as, as that's where everybody goes now and I found a company called Grafters and Grafters original monkey boots you know they made the original monkey boots and they were 45 euros so I ordered myself a pair that was six years ago and I still have that original pair of monkey boots today Here we go. This is my six year old pair of monkey boots and I've absolutely battered them to death. Um, I, in Spain, walked everywhere. You know, it's always sunny. It doesn't rain very often. And anywhere around town I used to walk. And I used to, I've probably done over 3000 miles in these shoes. I've used them for work. I've uh, painted boats in them. There's splattered in multiple different colours of paint, they've been polished a bunch of times. Absolutely battered, but they're still here. Um, I actually wore them this morning to go and uh, to feed my friend's cats. Um, that's how battered these are. Like, I really, really wear the heck out of them. The soles are quite worn in the uh, throttle pedal area and uh, also on the heels. But yeah, I've beaten the living heck out of them. And I've actually bought a second pair. This is a new pair of monkey boots. Now, they're sold in two different colours. They're sold in black and red. Uh, Grafters have actually started doing blue ones and some other different colours, I think orange as well. Uh, but, like, black leather with orange soles and, and laces and stuff. Um, but I stick with the classic brown. I like brown. It's kind of my neutral. Um, I like brown sunglasses, even though these are black. Um, I like brown suits. I'm, I'm kind of more of a brown than a black kind of guy. And my Most of my leather jackets are brown, not black. I think I've only got one leather jacket that's black. Uh, so I went for these six years ago and these are my new pair. These have been so good to me, they've been so reliable and so dependable that I've bought a new pair. They're made in the Czech Republic. So you know the people who make them, um, you know, have ethical work hours and get paid well and that kind of thing. Uh, unlike some of the other garment makers out there that aren't so ethical. Um, and they're very simply made for the money obviously the you know 45 euros isn't a heck of a lot of money so let's look at the construction they're a single thickness leather there's no liner they have a, a leather heel cap the toe cap in them is actually made of cardboard um uh, the the tongue has a loop in it so that it doesn't get lost down the side of your shoe unlike uh, a pair of converse they have this cool yellow stitching on them and they have a layer of leather in between the inner sole and the actual sole. That the uh, and the layer of leather is what the sole is bonded to. These were quite an aggressive sole once. In fact, that's what they look like when they're new. It's quite an aggressive sole before you do, you know, three thousand miles plus wearing them. Um, and uh, to say how badly I've actually treated them, I'm amazed and. I haven't polished these for this video. I've left them in an unpolished kind of roughed up state because I don't want to tart them up for the video and it's not sure how beaten up these are. These are incredibly beaten up, but I still wear them. Um, and they are fantastic value for money. Like I say, you could you could go for a job interview in these. Um, you can wear them with a suit. You can wear them with jeans and a t-shirt. You can, you know, they're super, super versatile. But before I love them too much, what are some of the bad points about these shoes? Well, you cannot get them wet, um, basically. You can, like, 
it's a bit like washing your hands with a, a, a non-waterproof watch on. You can get them kind of wet, you can walk on wet pavements and that kind of thing, but they're not a walking boot, they're not a hiking boot. You don't want to be walking through mud in them and that kind of thing. They're not like a Doc Martin, they're not a work boot. Um, they'll take a kick in, but the problem is once the leather gets wet, that cardboard toe cap gets wet. This one still has the cardboard toe cap in, although it's very deformed. Whereas this one, the cardboard toe cap's completely gone. Um, I do hide through these, I, you know, I feed the leather, I do look after the leather and I do polish them. You can see the anti-fouling on them there. Where's, where can I hear a cat? You can see the anti-fouling on them there. Um, and they've got white paint on them as well. But, um, like I said, I do look after them, I do polish them every now and then, but I didn't polish them for this video because I wanted you to see on camera exactly how beaten up these shoes are. The rubber on the front, it, it wasn't actually the, the sole didn't come away from the leather, the sole itself split ever so slightly, ever so slightly on the back here on one side of the shoes. Like I said, I've beaten the hell out of them. Um, but I stuck it back with some neoprene glue, just literally just a spot, like uh, a small dried peas worth of glue. And uh, it stuck them absolutely perfectly. I, I can't even tell which, oh here, just on this edge here, just as the, the sole's gotten thin. But like I say, I've knocked the living hell out of these boots. And the, I, I'm not a huge fan of this fake leather because as, you know, as, as vinyl does, it's kind of frayed and cracked, I have to say. Um, and when you first buy them, they are incredibly stiff. I will say this, they are incredibly stiff. I'm a big believer that whenever you buy new shoes, um, you should feed the leather. Because a lot of factories are heated, um, a lot of factories are air conditioned, and a lot of shops are air conditioned. So. If your shoes have been in a shop for months and months and months on a shelf, because you're a size 12 and, and very few people are, um, and like I said, these are a size 12, um, the, the leather can get very dry and very hard. And that will mean that when you first wear the shoes, they can rub. So if you buy your shoes first off, feed the leather, buy a, a tin of leather food, feed the leather, and they'll actually bed in a lot better, they'll actually wear in a lot better, they'll go softer quicker, and they will stay nicer longer without the leather cracking. There is some cracking that has happened in these here and, and kind of here, but it's it's normal for shoes that have been absolutely drenched and soaked and beaten and, and you know, like I said, I'm amazed they've held up as well as they have. As well as they have, and these are actually comfortable to the point where I can wear them without socks. So that tells you just how comfortable these actually are. The shoe box that they come in is the least impressive thing on the planet. Um, it's completely crap. Uh, you cannot keep your shoes in this shoe box. If you're one of those people that kind of keeps their shoes in the shoe box in the wardrobe, um, you can't do that with Grafters Monkey Boots. I've never received a pair of. Okay, I've only received two pairs, but still. Uh, that's a pretty small, you know, that's a pretty small test size, but um, every single shoe box of Grafter's Monkey Boots that I've ever received, the box has actually been falling apart by the time it gets to me. But the shoes inside have been completely intact. Um, uh, uh, another thing that I'll say is that I have very wide feet, like very wide feet, and these are wide enough. I can't wear Doc Martens. It's just not an option for me. Um, when I was a kid, I think it was like a triple G width or something like that. I've, I've got like giant hobbit feet. And these are plenty, plenty wide enough. Yeah, I can't wear Doc Martens. Uh, my feet are just too wide. My, my partner has skinny little feet. Um, and her, well, not so little feet actually. Um, but they're very skinny. And she swears by Doc Martens and loves her Doc Martens. I can't wear Doc Martens, my feet are just too wide. Um, but yeah, these are perfectly you know, wide enough to wear with kind of slim socks. I can't wear them with thick wool socks, like thick hiking boot type socks, not a chance. Um, I have to go a size up to do that just because my feet are so damn big. So what are my final thoughts about these shoes? Well, they're that good, I bought a second pair. That's about the best seal approval I can give a pair of shoes. Um, if I go back and buy a second pair, exactly the same as the first pair, 
you can't do better than that. The price is fantastic. I mean, 40, like I said, 45 quid, you can't buy a pair of dress, a decent dress shoes. I'm a big fan of leather sole shoes. Um, I like leather sole shoes because you can literally resole the leather sole, and so they kind of last forever. You just keep looking after the leather, and you'd get them resold like once every couple of years or something like that. But uh, clog makers and shoe repair people are getting really hard to find. I talked to a, a suit maker um, in Gibraltar and he actually told me that he'd started learning to resole his own uh, leather shoes because, you know, you simply can't find a really good shoemaker anymore uh, to do the job, which is a shame. And leather soles you can't wear in the wet, whereas these you can. Like I say, you can't get a good pair of leather sole shoes to wear with a suit for under 100 quid, really. Um, in the sales you can pick up a pair of good good ones for a hundred quid but these it doesn't have to be on sale any time of year you want and 45 euros so they're half the price so like I said I can't really fault them that cardboard toe cap isn't the greatest thing in the world and eventually if you get them wet often enough like really soaked often enough that cardboard toe cap will turn into this that's a bit sad um, they're impossible to polish without the uh, the yellow stitching getting a bit covered in brown polish. That's a bit annoying, but it does clean off. Um, and this strip of leather inside the sole, which starts off as black, quickly turns into beige. But I actually quite like the fact that the leather strip looks leather. I think it's more of a feature of the shoe than a fault. Um, it's a highlight of how they are made. I have heard that if the rubber sole peels off the leather, uh, it's very difficult and near to impossible to stick back on. But I knocked the living tofu out of these shoes and that didn't happen. I got the tiniest little split, I stuck it with some neoprene glue, uh, which is like three euros a tube or something like that. And to say these shoes were 45 euros six years ago, they are the deal of the century. They're an absolute bargain. Uh, 100%, I'd, I'll say 10 out of 10, would buy again, and I did. Um, I'm super happy with these shoes. In fact, I'm thinking about getting another pair in another colour because I love them so much. And sometimes what you're wearing doesn't really go with brown shoes and orange uh, or yellow laces. I have to say, if you're not a fan of yellow and you're not a fan of brown shoes, there are the black ones. Um, so even that's an upside. I don't like the black ones as much as I like these, um, although I haven't seen them in person. I don't own a pair, I only own two pairs of brown ones, so I can't comment on that. And brown leather and black leather tend to wear differently, so I can't comment on the quality of those either, although I'm sure they're very good. I will say I do have a pair of Grafter's Desert Boots. My Grafter's Desert Boots have not fared as well. They were, they were good money but um, in my typical treatment of shoes they've never been wet uh, but the sole is a different sort of sole and it hasn't fared as well um, and those do need gluing so I don't recommend the desert boots although for the money they, they did very well they've lasted me over two years um, but I recommend these incredibly highly go get yourself a pair <laughs> basically um, on Amazon or your local grafters uh, if you go on their website they should have a list of retailers if you want to support a local mum and pop type shop rather than going to some big goliath on Amazon um, go and do that or if you want to get them off Amazon get them off Amazon depending on where you live and what your circumstances are I'm not one to judge because I got these off Amazon uh, so yeah Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the sunglasses I'm wearing, there'll be a link to that video at the end of this one. Um, <laughs> and like I said, Grafters Monkey Boots. I will put a link to the Grafters website so you can check out all the shoes they make and not just the monkey boots uh, in the bottom of this video with my social media stuff as, as normal. And yeah, like I said, I massively, massively love these shoes. Um, they're simple, they look good. And they're an incredibly good price. So very, very happy with them. Thank you all for watching. If you know someone who wants a pair of these or who might like a pair of these or who is into retro clothing 
or he's like an old school anglophile and that kind of thing. Um, this on Skyline going past. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I'll tell you for Skyline, you can hear it. Noisy bugger. Um, if you are into that kind of thing, um, well, I'm, I've got lost now. If, if you have a friend who's into this kind of thing and who might like these shoes, or who's been asking you whether you know anyone who has a pair of monkey boots for that kind of thing to see the quality, please send them this video. It helps my channel massively. Another thing that you can do is click like if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you all for watching. Please be awesome to each other. If you have a pair of these or any other product by Grafters um, and you want to let other people know how you got on with yours and you want to let me know how you got on with yours, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.